Welcome to Burgo Industries. We are very proud to be here today and we really want to thank our dealers and you customers especially for buying our Burgo product. We've introduced a new line of equipment here and we want to show you how to run it. So with me today we have Jordan Henderson and we have Curtis Heinrichsen and we have Trent Schumka. And of course myself, I'm just here to show you that anybody can come out and try to run this stuff, but these guys are going to show you how to run it. So welcome and thank you very much and sit back and relax and watch this video because when you're done watching this, you'll know how to run this nice equipment that you've purchased through your dealership. All right, I'm Jordan Henderson, uh, Territory Manager for Alberta and a little bit of Southwest Saskatchewan and today we're going to be taking you through our startup checklist. So we released this last year just before seeding and uh, what we want to do today is have a video of each of the steps going through the startup checklist. You can find this on our website borgo.com in the customer service section. Just a couple things we're going to assume here before we get started. Right at the top of our page note the following assumptions. First of all your drill and tank have been PDI'd and functional tested correctly by our amazing dealer network. The second is that seed and fertilizer are available. We do already have that on our cart. The third is that current software and firmware versions are installed. So you can double check with your dealer that you have the current software and firmware versions. We're going to be going off the newest version today. And finally that the client name, farm name, all fields and all products are entered into your monitor. Now this is something that you can do ahead of time uh, through the winter before we get out seeding and next I'm going to show you how to do that on our monitor. All right, so now we're in the cab of the tractor and I'm going to walk you through uh, entering the client name, farm name, all field names and all products. This is something that you can do ahead of time if you want to get a little bit of a head start on the season, but for today we'll just show you how to go through each of the steps in the cab of the tractor here. So first of all, I want to enter my client name, farm name and all field names. And to do that, we want to bring out our guidance page. So our guidance page is the little green triangle on our mini views in the expanded form, so finger on the middle here and drag it out. And then just on the right, we go into our field tab. We bring out our field tab, hit the plus button, and now you'll see here I can enter a client name, farm name, and all my field names. So we'll start with the client name, click on the new. For today, we'll just call this Borgo 2020. We'll move on to the farm name. So if you have more than one farm, you can create additional farm names. For today, we're just going to create one and I'm going to name it the same thing, Borgo Farm. And finally, we get to the field names. So for today, I'm just going to call one field test. Hit the green check mark. Hit the green check mark again. And now I'm in that test field, the field that I called test. To enter an additional field, I just touch on my field tab again, hit the plus button, change that field name to anything else, so we'll just call it BG for today, green check mark, green check mark, and in that way you can enter in all of your fields. The last thing we'll do, just to make things again a little quicker when we finally get out to the field, touch on the wrench, except we're off to the side here, it's on the bottom right, product, granular and all products are the same so we'll just do a granular one for today. At the very top here we go to new product and now we are in the new product wizard. I'll touch on the Borgo tab, yellow over arrow, we'll pick whatever we're going to be seeding. For today we'll just call it, call it wheat. Yellow over arrow if you want to name it something else. If you have different varieties we can name them. I'm just going to call this one BG for today. Once you're happy with that, yellow over arrow, green check mark, and now you'll see I've entered wheat BG into my product list. Just continue with that, scrolling back up to the top here. Just keep touching new product and add all the products that you're going to use for this year and you'll give yourself a bit of a head start. So you'll notice on the startup checklist there's a safety operations section in there. We definitely want to advise you that if you're going to do some work underneath your drill that first off you shut off your opener hydraulics, shut down your tractor and activate your safety valve off, close the safety valve at the hitch. Do all those things. The reason it's extra important on our 3330, 3335, especially with the LiftMaster option, 
Our openers and mid-row banners raise and lower based on coverage. So if you're seating and you happen to stop in the middle of a pass to make an adjustment on your drill, and you were to crawl under there without shutting off those hydraulics, if that GPS sees a drift of one inch towards unseated ground, your openers can automatically drop and that would be a bad situation. So make sure, shut off your hydraulics, shut off your tractor and close your safety valve at the front of your hitch. I want to talk about our active inner wing down pressure circuit. So when your drill is seating, when your openers are down and your opener circuit is engaged, a small amount of pressure can bypass to these inner wing cylinders and that puts down pressure on the inner wing when you need it for hard ground. But if your drill is in the field position and you're not seating and you decide to move from one end of the field to the other, possibly to fill, if you would forget to activate your opener hydraulics, you have a chance of actually bending those inner wing cylinders because when your opener circuit is in neutral or disengaged, now flow cannot go back and forth to the tractor and that cylinder acts like it's locked. So to prevent any damage, anytime you move our drill in field position, make sure your opener circuit is engaged to allow those cylinders to float. So when you're folding your drill up to go into transport, Make sure your flow is set so that the outer wing comes up first and then the inner wing follows in that order. And once your drill is completely folded in, once it touches in the center and reaches the full transport position, just momentarily put your wing lift circuit in float and then back to neutral before you head off down the road. Just want to point out something that you need to know when you're using the high float system. When you put your drill into the transport position, Make sure that your high float cylinders are fully retracted before you take off in transport and close this ball valve. If you don't, if those cylinders are extended and you make a turn, you're going to damage the cylinders. So please monitor that before you go in transport. So this is going to be pretty obvious for you guys. When you're unfolding your drill, obviously you're going to remove the safety pin so that you can lower your wing down. But what we've had happen a couple times is once the wing's down, if that operator puts that pin back in this position and forgets it there and goes to the transport position, folds that wing up, when it contacts this pin, it can actually damage the front row of your drill. So make sure you always put the transport pin in the storage position right here. All right, so now that we've removed our wing pins and our drill is completely unfolded, for us our drill unfold and unfold is hydraulic two. We wanna make sure that we click that hydraulic remote back into neutral. So when you're running, you do not run with your wing lift circuit engaged. We wanna make sure that that wing lift circuit is in neutral. Step two talks about the quick start options and using the quick start button. Our quick start button is this button right on the top right hand corner here. Quick start will drive you through a sequence of events every time, basically every time you enter a new field, but every time you push that button. And what I'm going to talk about here is the way to optimize it for this, for, the, uh, for your season. So we'll touch on the wrench in the bottom left hand corner. So we want to go to system, features, guidance first of all, job helper mode, we want to make sure that quick start is turned on. So job helper mode will touch that and turn on quick start. And then just going across here to the quick start icon. This is where you can change what your sequence of events uh, for quick start is every time you push that button. The first one, export job report for previous job. If you want to export your jobs onto a USB stick, you'll want this enabled. If not, you can have it disabled change field because we've already entered all of our field names we can have this action be select a field in your second season if you have a GPS data um, point on each of your fields you can actually have it auto locate but for this year we'll leave it on select field assuming it's your first year record boundary we don't need turned on change job option state enabled action we can have it create a job or select a job usually you'll want to create one each time and as far as the job name goes, we can either have a custom job name where it, it will name your job the same for every field. You can have it be a default job name where it'll just kick you out a default name. Or you can prompt and you can change that name each time you hit the quick start button. So for right now, we're going to just call it custom. I've named my custom field 
BG 2020. So that means every time we start a job, it will be called BG 2020. Just makes things a little bit easier. And that's how to change the quick start sequence so that when we hit the quick start button up in the top right, it will drive us through those things. Okay, now that we've got our quick start sequence of events done the way we want it to, come up here and touch the quick start button. So I'll touch on that quick start button and you'll notice it starts driving me through that sequence. So the first thing it's gonna ask me to do is select a field. So from our list of fields here, you'll probably have a lot more. I'm just gonna click on the Borgo field, BG. I hit the green check mark. And now you'll see what's happened is it's put us into a field. It's created a job name with the custom name BG2020. Our procedure is complete and we can go to the next step. We're gonna be going through enabling and disabling tanks. For example, if you have a saddle tank and you're not using it, you may wanna disable it um, in our monitor. So to do that, we would click on the wrench. We go implement, cedar, granular, and tank. And I'm already on tank five. In order to disable, just on the status here, we would just click disable. And you're either going to enable or disable any of the tanks that you are using or not using. So for now, we'll just leave our tank five disabled and we'll go on to the next step. We're gonna run what's called tank optimizer. In order to find tank optimizer, we hit our running man, maximize the seed controller, pull out our configuration tab, multi-tank calibration, tank optimizer. Now with tank optimizer, it's going to give you the, it's gonna kick out the optimal way to put the products in your tank to get the most acres per fill. All right, in order to save a little bit of time, I just entered a few products in order to, in our tank optimizer screen, in order to enter a product, we just hit this plus button and we'll select from all the products that we've entered in the back of our monitor. For today, we've got 46, wheat, and 1251. Our rates, you can see on the side here, assign to multiple meters, split rate is yes or no, and then you can remove the product. Assign to multiple meters means that if it is the most efficient, it will assign that product to more than one meter or more than one tank. Split the rate, if you say yes on this, it means that if you have more than one, if you have a product in more than one tank, it will split the total rate between those two tanks. So for example, if we had 46 in two different tanks, it might do 100 out of one, 100 out of the other. You can say yes or no to each one of these. And as far as the multiple meters, you can either assign it to multiple meters, or if you want it in one tank, we can also assign it to an individual tank. For now, we'll just leave it as is, assign to multiple meters, split rate, yes, if we can. We hit the yellow over arrow, and it will automatically give you the most optimal way of filling the tank so that you get the most acres per fill. This red number here is your approximate number of acres you'll get per fill. Likely will be a little higher than you can actually get. And then as you can see here, what it's done is it's split our wheat between tanks two and three, 77.7 in tank two, 47.3 out of tank three. If this is the grouping that we want, green check mark, apply configuration, yes. And you'll notice now when we go to our tank screen, our configurator screen, our seed controller screen, it has now put each one of those products, it has assigned it into each correct tank. It's got the correct requested rate. Thanks. The last thing we need to do, and this is very important if you have sectional control, is assign the correct boom seed or fertilizer to each one of these tanks. In order to do that, we go to the wrench, implement, cedar, granular, and tank. And for each one of those tanks, for example, tank one, you'll see this section control button. We need to tell the X35 whether you're running out of that tank, the, the product you're running out of that tank is going to the fertilizer boom or the seed boom. So for this one, tank one, we have 46. This is correct, it is going out of the fertilizer boom. If I go to tank two, I have wheat, section control, it is going out of the seed boom. Three is wheat, but it thinks that it's going out of fert, so I just wanna change that. 
And we will do that with each one of our products. All right, our next step uh, will be to enter the Borgo recommended ASC granular product timings from our quick reference card. You should get a quick reference card with each drill and tank that we send out. And on that quick reference card, you'll look up your drill size and your tank size to get the correct sectional control times. And then what we wanna do is we would go into implement, section control, and timing. And if you have dual boom, you'll notice that we have, if I click on the number two here, our seed boom and our fertilizer boom. To save a little bit of time, I have entered all the numbers already, but what you'll do is click on each one of these. So this is section one on time, and you'll just enter what's on that quick reference card for your combination of drill and tank. Then we would go down and do all of them on on time. Same thing for off time once you've done that enter all of them off of that quick reference card. Once you've done that, make sure if you have the dual boom system, we wanna hit three, get to our fertilizer boom, same thing. On time, enter each one of those all the way down. Make sure you're using the scroll button here and scrolling down to get all your sections and off time and we will enter all those. Then once you've got all of your on and off times entered in the section control timing, do keep in mind, we also have to go implement, cedar, granular, and tank. We also have these on and off time to SC location within each tank. So each one of our tanks will also have an on and off time to SC location. You'll also find these on the quick reference cards. And again, we just touch, put the correct one in from our card, off time, and you'll go through and do that for each one of your tanks. The next step we're gonna look at is, while we're still in the cab here, just getting some more settings done, is our keypads. So we can go from our section control timing, implement, operator inputs, and keypad. And this is where we can change what the buttons on our keypad in cab and at the tank can do. And each one of these buttons, A, B, C, six, seven, and eight, can all do different functions. So you can go through these and just figure out what would be your ideal function for each one of those buttons. And we can do that for the, for the tractor cab and for the tank. Using your phone or tablet, you would use the instructions we have on borgo.com to connect to the extend app so that you can extend your monitor out to the tank when we are calibrating and filling. And the final thing we do before we jump out of the cab is to engage both of our fan hydraulics, fan one and fan two, and then we'll jump out of the cab. So now we've done everything we can up in the cab uh, with our monitor. We're now standing at the side of the tank and we're gonna go ahead and fill based on what our monitor kicked out as the most optimal way to put product in each tank. So we're gonna grab our remote from, uh, from the side of the tank here. You're gonna turn your remote on, make sure that you've got a link. If you don't have a link, follow the instructions on the checklist to get your remote linked to the receiver here. We'll fill our tank according to what our tank optimizer or, or however you've got your tank um, uh, set up in our, in our monitor. So in our case, we're gonna have 46 in tank one, wheat in tanks two and three, and our starter in the back tank. You're gonna get the live weights from our individual scales. So you'll just look at the weights on your remote and just fill as necessary, as the uh, monitor suggested. All right, now that we've finished filling our tank with a 9000 series cart, we wanna come back into the monitor. We go into our seed controller screen, press on the weight button, and we wanna hit fill all tanks and hit yes. And what that will do is it will match our theoretical full value with the actual fill weight that you have back at the tank. So you would go ahead and calibrate each one of your tanks at this point. Um, if you need to see the calibration video, we're gonna have a link provided in the video or we, you can reference your startup checklist which also has links to a full calibration. So just keep in mind, once you've finished your calibration, the last thing that you wanna do, unless you wanna strip seed an area about this wide through your field, is to take that drop tube out of that calibration tube and put it either back in your fertilizer or your seed airstream. All right, last couple things before we head back up to the cab. We're gonna to wanna to make sure every one of those tank lids are closed and sealed properly. And finally, you'll hit the fan button on your remote to re-engage your fans. 
And then lastly, we want to turn off the conveyor switch here, the stop, the red stop button. We want to turn that off to disengage the connection to your remote. This ensures that the remote, if you have it in the cab, is not able to function or potentially able to pull that conveyor out of the cradle. Now we're going to go to putting product in the ground. Something that's extremely important is to make sure when you hook up your opener circuit that you have that hooked up correctly. Before you do your check of your hydraulics, in order for you to raise and lower your openers in a stationary position, if you have sectional control, you will have to turn your ASC off. Otherwise, it's going to think that there's coverage in that spot and it may not let you lower the openers. The best way to check if it is hooked up correctly is come down to your opener block and when you see your opener block at the top is the directional valve. This directional valve is what controls the openers up down and when you're hooked up correctly when you pop this plug out the opener should drop to the ground. If they go the other direction you are hooked up incorrectly and you could do damage to your drill. So to see it in the cab, it's virtually the same concept. When this opener up down button is red, your openers need to be up. And when we touch it, it starts dropping. And once it's all the way down, it'll turn green. And that ensures if your openers are going down when that's green, your hydraulics are plumbed the right way. So same thing on the keypad. We have button A program to drop the openers. When that turns green, the opener should be dropping if your hydraulics are plumbed correct. If your drill doesn't have Packmaster or Liftmaster and you're controlling your up-down using the 415 drill control box or even the 410, same thing on it. Make sure that when you hit the lower side of your button that the openers drop and the raised side of the button raises them. If it does the opposite, your hydraulics are hooked up wrong and you could do damage to your drill. Okay, we've hooked up our hydraulics and we're ready to show you some things to do with LiftMaster and TrackMaster. The first thing you want to know when you're stationary and you want to do some uh, training on this is your ASC should be off, otherwise your lift lower might not function because it thinks it's on seated ground. That's how LiftMaster works, so make sure it's off. This button here is your float button. So literally when your openers are lowered into the ground and you start seeing a pressure on your gauge, if we turn the float button off, which is red, now we go to a very low pressure for seating through a low spot, trying to power through that with the kind of it in the float mode. When we engage that back in, that's the opener down pressure engaged. Let's talk about another couple of buttons here. So this was our lift lower button. That raises and lowers your openers, as you know, and that button is independent of your master switch when this is red. But if we turn the track master button green and we cycle that once to make it orange, which gets it in the ready state, now when I turn my master switch to green, which starts the seed coming out of the distribution package, it, does, it also lowers the openers into the ground. So when the track master button is green, it ties the opener up down circuit to the master switch. So if I shut the distribution off, the openers will raise. So at this point, we've assumed that you've calibrated your pack master and everything is ready to start seating. What we would like to suggest you do is to run in manual mode, which is a picture of a hand. So when I press that, that's automatic mode. This is manual mode. When we have it set in manual mode, now we're controlling strictly the pressure. So if you've owned a drill of ours in the past and didn't have Packmaster and normally seated using about 1300 PSI, let's say, we would suggest that you put it in manual, set the drive power until the pressure reaches about that 1300 and start seating. You're gonna see this pack force move on you. So if it's kind of trending between 150 and 190, depending where you are in the field, a rough average of that might be 170. What we would tell you to do then to utilize your pack master is put it in auto mode and set your pack force at 170 because that's a good starting point. Once you've done that, you'd go out, check the firmness of the soil packed over the seed and maybe you're comfortable with that. 
you're going to see this pressure as you're seating change on you. We're stationary so it's not going to move, but that's something that's going to constantly adjust on you when it's working properly. What I wanted to show in this part of the field is um, basically what we see for a pack force is trying to hold that 170 pounds and in this area of the field we're generally in that looks like that 1400 psi and this is going to vary but I'm going to head towards a road and should be packed quite hard and I'm going to drive across it and we'll see what happens to our operating pressure to hold that pack force. So here we are, we've maintained the same speed, but we're driving over the hard packed road and you can see our pressure has continually climbed here generally as we go along this road and that's because it needs more operating pressure to hold 170 pounds of pack force in this area of the field because it's a hard packed road. Okay, we're going to move on here now and we're going to talk about inner wing down pressure. We're going to need our tractor hydraulics engaged in the tractor while the opener is in the down position. Tractor hydraulics are engaged, of course, and then we can do adjustments on the inner wing down pressure. Simply that's done on, on this gauge here, and with this valve you pluck the black cap off. Uh, you have a wrench to loosen your jam nut, and then you have your own wrench to adjust your pressure. So what you get when you get the unit, you want to have it down in the bottom of the green here because most times in the spring there's good moisture out there and certain conditions are softer. There's a lot of weight on this machine so you don't want to have a, a lot of pressure on the inner wing down pressure. If you get into a situation where your back carrier wheels on your inner wing are starting to ride out, it's drying up, you want to increase that inner wing down pressure and you simply do that by adjusting your uh, pressure on this valve here and you can see the inner wing down pressure increases. Again, don't go more than 150 psi at a time. Once you see that the weight from the center section is going out to your inner wing and those back carrier wheels on the back are starting to ride on the ground again, you're good. If you get to a point where you have the pressure too high and you get it up into the red and your front carrier wheels start to sink down on the inner wing, you simply have too much pressure on there and you just want to reverse the direction on that. Setting the MRB trip pressure. If you see the MRB openers move a lot during normal operation, particularly when seating in hard soil, you will most likely need to increase the trip pressure. If you notice the MRB openers rolling over rocks or other obstacles without tripping, then the pressure needs to be reduced. To adjust the hydraulic pressure, activate the MRB 3 circuit, loosen the lock nut then turn the adjuster clockwise to increase trip pressure or counterclockwise to decrease trip pressure. Adjust to the desired pressure using the gauge for reference. Tighten the lock nut. Keep adjustments at 100 psi at a time until optimal operation is achieved. Setting the high flotation hydraulic pressure. The hydraulic pressure setting for the high flotation hitch should be such that skewing is avoided during normal operation, but allow for turning at the headlands. If the mainframe tires begin to skid when entering a turn, or if the hitch attempts to snap into line when it is greater than 10 degrees from straight when exiting a turn, the pressure should be decreased. If the drill does not snap into line when the hitch is less than 7 degrees straight as you are exiting a turn, or if the drill is skewing when seating on a side hill, the pressure should be increased. All right, so we've, we're finished with our hydraulics. Now we're going to move on to the air kit. And the first thing being, we're going to set our minimum fan speeds based off, off the fan speed charts. So to, to access that, you go to the website, www.borgo.com. And under customer service icon, you will be able to go down and into the fan speeds. And you want to make sure you're selecting the correct fan chart. So it's going to, you want to make sure you have the proper fan. So on the back, you can see they got decals on them. So we've got a high speed. You can see the HC means high capacity. And then this one being a triple shoot, we've actually got the third fan up here and it's got the STD. So that's your standard fan. So you want to make sure on your, you're selecting the proper chart with, with your fan. And then you've got to make sure it's the right footage for your, for your drill. 
drill the right size the right spacing and then make sure it's a, you're looking at eight port versus ten port uh, or six port manifolds when selecting the charts so once you've selected your minimum fan speed that is basically your starting point the best way to confirm that you've got the correct fan speed is our clean out time so we're going to go to the drill and we're going to explain a little bit more what that means that comes that can also come into play if you've got third-party blockage because our Borgo charts might be a little bit uh, not quite as accurate based on third-party blockers so that the clean out times are your end check to make sure that you've got the right speed okay. so, so what we mean by clean out times is we're talking about the time it takes for that product to clean out so from your meter from your mouth if you shut your master off or you shut your meter off how long does it take for that product to clean out and stop coming out of the opener on your drill okay so we want that to be anywhere in two in the two to four second range so the best place to check is on the main frame so when you shut your meter off you want to count between two to four seconds if it's longer than four seconds you need a little bit more fan speed if it's shorter than two seconds then you you probably have a little bit too much so to check clean out times one of the easiest ways to do it is have a guy in the cab so i've got curtis in there he's going to run some product for a few seconds and then he's going to signal to me when he shut that that master off when he signals it i'm going to start my stopwatch and then and then time it to the opener so he's going to run some product and now i'm going to watch for the signal So I start my stopwatch. About 3.9 seconds. So we're, we're pretty close. We're at the high end of the range, but we're in that two to four seconds. So one last point with your clean out times, when you're checking those, make sure you're just, you're timing it to the end of the bulk of the product coming through. You don't have to wait for every last kernel. It's the bulk of the product. And then you would set your stopwatch. Make sure you're doing this for every air kit. So do it for your seed and then do it for your, for your fertilizer as well. So now that we've got our fan speed and we know we've got that set properly, one of the most important things you have to check is your sections. We want to make sure that we're hooked up properly so that section one on your seed is, is actually showing as section one on your, on your X35 or I'm holding the tablet here because this is what I'm going to use to, to, to check it. So with your seed, you want to make sure you, if you're shutting off section one, it's actually section one and then going across the drill and checking those for your seed. Then you want to do the same thing for your fertilizer. So if it's dual boom, like you've got you've got seed and fert, you want to do the same thing. Check that section one is section one on the mid rows all the way across. Then to go one step further with the triple shoot, now we've got another one that we've got to make sure we're, is is set properly for the sections going to your to your dual knife opener. So the easiest way to check your sections is to use a tablet with your extend app and on your monitor first you're going to want to make sure your ASC is turned off. You're going to want to have all your sections turned off, set a manual speed and then turn on your master switch. At that point you could come out and use your tablet and then just click the sections and make sure that they're, they're corresponding with the proper section on the tablet. So right now I'm just going to check section one with my wheat. I'm going to turn section one on. I hear the product going and then I'm going to go to section one and make sure it's coming out at that section. So then I'll turn section one off and I'll hit section two and so on across the drill. This is very important to check, especially if it's a new drill and tank that are being paired up for the first time, or any time that you disconnect your drill from your tank, when you pair them back up, recheck them. So the last point with checking your sections, I showed you how to do it with the Extend app. If you don't happen to have that feature, you're going to, you might need a little bit of help and have somebody in the cab that's turning those sections on or off and you're just going back and making sure, checking across to make sure the product is going to the proper section. 
All right, so we're almost ready to go do some seating at this point. Uh, we've got everything set that we can in the cab. We've got our hydraulics done on the drill. We've got our air kit done. Our uh, fan speed is correct. We know our sections are all good. The last thing we want to do before we go do some digging in the field is just get an initial depth setting on our openers and our banders. Uh, this could be different depending on what drill you have. So you may be setting QDA, AccuSet um, at, the, at the opener for our XTC or our 3720, 3820. Regardless of what you've got, just get an initial depth setting before we actually start doing digging in the ground. We're getting almost ready to go out in the field and, and do some seeding. And you might not think much about tire pressure and seed depth, but when we go to our, especially our high float units, our big center tires on a high float machine like this one is here, it's 35 PSA on those 800 tires in the middle. This particular one at 76 feet on the inner wing is 24 PSI, and that's on a decal here, so you want to make sure you check your decal. And on the outer wing, because it's a smaller wing and less weight, it's 14 PSI. Okay, so what I'm going to talk to you about now is an exciting new feature we have for the spring of 2021, and that is our Borgo AccuSet. And AccuSet is the ability to adjust the depth of your openers via a phone or a tablet with the AccuSet app, the Borgo AccuSet app. And the way we, you can tell if you have AccuSet is if you have one of these harnesses coming off of your QDA cylinders. It'll be a harness off of each QDA cylinder. So now we're going to walk you through how to uh, set up the AccuSet system on the Borgo drill. So first we want our tractor turned on and our hydraulics to our opener lift lower engaged. And we're going to come back and scan for that Bluetooth on our AccuSet. So I'm going to just hit the scan button and it should pick up your AccuSet ECU. So now that we're connected, we would just touch on that AccuSet ECU that we're connected to. You'll open up your app, you can see that the, uh, the display is very simple and we want to first calibrate our AccuSet cylinders. So to do that we want our tractor on and our drill lift lower engaged and before we calibrate we need to take all of our shims out of all of the QDA cylinder locations. And you'll want to calibrate at least once at the beginning of the year and potentially as needed through the year. To calibrate, very simple, we just touch on our calibration button and start the calibration. And what that's gonna do is drop your QDA cylinders all the way to the bottom, onto the red shims, and then lift it all the way to the top uh, of the complete, the, the full stroke of the cylinders. Okay, now just to show how to save some presets, let's say we want to save a shallower preset. I'm going to have my drill go a little shallower so I can see, you can see that it's lifting up a little bit. And we're just going to touch on the save button. And I'm going to save that as my shallow setting. And now my shallow setting has been saved to nine. If I want it to go a little deeper, let's say we want to go to number seven. And I want to save that as my normal opener setting. Click save, click normal, and that is now my normal opener setting. Finally, transport mode. Transport mode, we can go into low position and high position. High position would be if you want your drill to be lifted as high as possible, to keep your openers as high as possible off the ground. Low position would be if you want to try and get under something. And then finally, just to double check our calibration, what we can do is match the number of shims um, on our actual QDA cylinder that it is showing on your app. So for this example, we're going to show our uh, app is showing three, uh, a depth setting of three. And I'm just going to come over and check that by putting three shims into our QDA cylinder just to double check. And just important to keep in mind, there will be approximately a half a shim of tolerance when you're doing your, after your calibration. So you may find that you're, you can't quite get that third shim in, it'll be a little bit tight. Just keep that in mind, it's, it's more for uh, just double checking our calibration. All right, so now that we've got our initial depth setting complete, uh, we've done everything that we can from a static perspective, we're ready to go move some dirt. And a couple things that we want to do now, what we're going to do is we're going to go seed about a 50 to 100 foot pass, and there's a few things that we want to check after we've seeded that short pass. The first thing we want to check, obviously, is our seed depth. We want to make sure that that seed is at the correct depth. If it's not at the correct depth, we would adjust our openers accordingly or our QDA cylinders. The next thing that you want to check is your bander depth. Very, very 
important to make sure that your banders are going where you want them to go. Finally on the drill we want to check our packing pressure. We want to make sure that our packing pressure is the correct amount, it's at the rate that you want it to be or that Packmaster is performing the way that you want it to so your packing pressure is correct. A couple more things that you want to check in the cab of your tractor. We want to make sure that our meters are not fluctuating so once we've got product rolling through our system our meters aren't fluctuating and just a final check back at the back of your tank make sure that your fans aren't oscillating we don't want to see fan fluctuation as you're going down the field so we're just going to go ahead and, and seed our pass here and really what we're going to be looking for when we start out here is this metering rpm it's a little bit tough to see at the bottom here or this metering rpm here we just want to make sure that our meters are actually settling out they're not bouncing all over the place uh, you will not be able to see fan fluctuations here this is our fan speed we won't actually be able to see the fan fluctuations in the cab you'll have to be at the back just listening for that and then the other thing that we want to make sure is that our packing force here is is showing up uh, correctly so we want to make sure that our, our packing force is actually where we want it to be. Once we've seeded our, our pass, we're going to jump out of the cab, check our seed depth, check our packing pressure, check our mid-row bander depth. So at this point I'm going to turn my master switch on. And we're just going to start seeding some product. And what I'm looking for here is just to make sure that, that metering, those meters aren't fluctuating and that we're hitting our correct packing pressure. Okay, so now that we've finished seeding our 50 foot strip, we want to do probably the most important thing you're going to do here with your Borgo drill and that's check the depth. We want to make sure that the seed is going to the correct uh, depth that you want it to go. But especially for our first year or the first time you're pulling your drill out, you want to make sure that not only is the seed going to the correct depth, but it's going to the correct depth all the way across your drill. In other words, we want to make sure that our drill is leveled. We want to make sure it's leveled across and from front to back. So we're checking openers in several locations across the drill and also uh, openers on the front row, middle row, and back row. If you do find that your drill is not level, this is especially true with a QDA drill, we want you to refer to your owner's manual or talk to your dealer about making sure to get that drill level. The other thing that we want to check, mid-row bander depth. We want to make sure that our mid-row banders are going to the correct depth that we want them to. And finally, we want to check packing pressure. So whether you're using Packmaster, a 410 or a 415 box, make sure that your packing pressure is where you want it to be. Okay, on this one here, we're running the Trimax feature. So you can see we run a PLD opener. You can see the seed is off to the right hand side here, right on the little shelf here, there's a seed. And then the furrow for the fertilizer knife that runs on the front is right beside it, just off to the side and a little lower there. And then if we move six inches over to our right, we're running a mid-row bander and we have our nitrogen fertilizer blend going down on the mid-row bander. Okay, so we've finished seeding our, our 50 foot pass. Our depth is where we want it to be. Packing pressure is where we want it to be. And mid row bander depth is where we want it to be. Now we're going to go ahead and check ASC times. Very, very important that we check our, our ASC times before we actually get to the field. We've already put in the default ASC times, so that's what we'll be starting with. Now we're going to adjust them to make sure that they're exactly where you want them to be. So we've seeded two 400 foot passes, somewhere around there, down and back. And we're going to go perpendicular across those passes with our ASC on, our drill lifted and product spraying on the ground and in that way we'll be able to see how our ASC times look from the default times and adjust as necessary. So now we're in the cab of the tractor and we're about to go perpendicular to the two passes we've made. You can see the passes that we've made up here in the guidance page. Just want to make sure as you're going across these passes you've now got your ASC turned on, your track master turned off, drill is lifted and as I go across that coverage I'm just going to turn my master switch on.
right, so we made our first pass to check the timings, and what we found was our seed was fine, but this flag marks where my where our fertilizer turned back on, and there's far too much of a of a miss. So we are going to go now into the cab, adjust those timings, and make another pass and check it again. So we've made our second pass and now we can see with the different time we've got much more overlap than we had the first pass. So now we're happy with our timings so we're going to do another pass now still with the openers up at a 45 degree angle to check to make sure each section is turning on properly we're not having any misses and then we're going to do one final pass perpendicular with the openers down in the ground which is the most important check to do at the end because when you drop those openers your your fan speed is also probably going to drop a little bit and that will affect your timing so when you do that final pass with the opener in the ground you want to make sure you're digging to, to see that there's product right up to the headland and then product right out of the headland Okay, so the last thing we want to do before we can actually go seed is just erase any coverage we had on the job that we started when we were doing the setup. So you can see on my screen here, I've got some, some coverage here from when we were doing depth checking. And I just want to make sure that that coverage is deleted or erased before we drive over it so that our AS ASC doesn't turn off when we go over that section. To do that, we go to our jobs tab, click on the jobs tab, erase button. It'll ask if you want to clear the job so all coverage will be cleared and the job totals will be reset. Click yes. We've erased our coverage and we're ready to seed. So what we wanted to show you today was how to create a boundary from coverage. And so we just used a small field here. And what you have to do is drive around your existing field completely and make sure you get right to the end. So to create that boundary from coverage, it's a matter of pressing your field button. And at the bottom, you're gonna see this shape, this symbol here of the pencil with a headland. You touch that. And now literally, we'll hit the check mark the boundary will be created and if you can see it here this small thin blue line now is the boundary around the outside of your field when you go to boundary limit on your auto section control button and touch the field boundary mode now it enables you to only seed with inside that boundary and you'll notice it's grayed out around the outside. So now if your seeder happens to swing past the outside of your field into your neighbor's field, the sections will turn off and it'll stop seeding automatically. The other thing you're gonna notice on the screen right now is there's an orange line inside my field. That orange line can now be utilized and what it is is the headland manager portion and it allows you to seed your headlands last this is the interior of our field and we can seed that out and once we've seeded out the interior we can switch our boundary limit back to field boundary and now finish off by seeding that last headland so it allows you to seed your field and where you're driving on your headland, seed that last. What I want to show you as well within the headland manager, which is inside the field button, and then this symbol here is your headland management. If we set a headland offset at minus 20 feet, as an example, and hit the check mark and hit the check mark, it brings that 
interior of that field closer to the boundary or closer to your first headland and that way if you're not driving with your auto steer working you have a little bit of room for overlap and therefore won't have a miss when you do your last headland which in our case is the second one okay so we're gonna make our pass in the interior of our field using the headland function I'm going to engage my machine right now and nothing's gonna happen right here because we're on seated ground on our outside headland but even when I turn to make my pass going east nothing's gonna happen until my machine gets closer to that unseated section so if you watch the sections turn on behind the drill that happens when we get to the interior of the field so now my openers are dropping and my sections are turning on right now and we're seating as we're crossing going east what you're gonna see when we get to the other end is the exact opposite of course We're getting close to that point, we're starting to see sections turning off and once the back of the drill is through that virtual headland, <clears throat> the openers are starting to lift now as we speak and uh, we've made our interior of our field pass. I wanted to explain the exclusion zone feature on the monitor. So we've seated around a small area here which happens to be a rock pile and if you want to make an exclusion zone around that area that you're never ever going to seat it, you would go to the field button, create a boundary from coverage. You are going to have to play with your smoothing setting here dependent on how sharp of a corner you're making around that exclusion zone and the size of it and you can also exclude very small areas right here like this one by adjusting your minimum excluded area once you've got it set where you want it we'll hit the check mark it's going to make new boundaries around ex different zones in the field it doesn't know which one you want to exclude so you have to eliminate the ones that you don't want which this area we're going to continue seeding and seed out so i'm going to eliminate that by just pressing my finger and holding on that boundary line and then hitting the trash can and erasing it and then if i go to another part of this field i've got another area that i'm going to eventually seed out if i want to eliminate that because it's not really an exclusion zone i touched on it and held my finger there for a second and hit the trash can and erase that now that we're down to just our original boundary um, and this exclusion zone around this rock pile because we had a little coverage outside the field i'm just going to get rid of that as well now just to show you what it does i'm going to erase this field and basically that allows you to start over I just want to show you that next year when you come back to this field so we go to the select button and go to our client go to our farm in this case it was a test field so you notice when we come back into this field we have our boundary from last year and our exclusion zone around that rock pile so if we change our boundary limit to field boundary anything inside your boundary can be seeded but you'll notice this exclusion zone is grayed out now you can't seed that area the following year